am here with Jamie Lindsay, who is sitting in the rain, but inside his car in Sydney. Jamie, welcome to Summer Country Music. Good to see you. Hello, how are you? And thanks for having me on your show. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, congratulations on your new single, Carry On, which is an upbeat song that handles subject matter that is not so upbeat, I think. Um, in that, it's addressing what happens when you feel like you can't carry on. So I'm wondering what inspired you to write it? The inspiration came from a charity event that I played about 18 months ago up in Wyong, and it was for uh, men's health awareness, um, suicide prevention. Um, but in saying that, it's something that's been around my life, um, unfortunately, fairly consistent. You know, I can remember growing up where my dad would say, uh, you know, such and such from that farm, took his own life, and uh, my first cousin took his own life and I've had friends that have taken their own life as well. And um, so, you know, it's, it's always been somewhat a part of my upbringing. Um, and then I think that charity event just really kind of hit home. And I can remember being backstage and listening to um, the families of um, the victims and, and um, it's very heartbreaking stuff it was very heavy. And then I just, I think about, I think about, the days where I'm feeling a little bit low or feeling like the pressures of the world and just, you know, bills and mortgages and kids and whatever else you've got going on in your life. And I just like, I just kick my own ass, you know, I just go, Hey, Hey, you know, stop thinking that way, get up, you know, or take a breath and just, you know, just, just, reevaluate the situation and carry on you know mm. um and so the song writing the song you know i think i probably wrote the the lyrics within like an hour or so because it really it, it was easy to say what i wanted to say and and get across the music wise when i went to produce the music i wanted to make sure that the music was very exciting and very dynamic and 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 really had that lift in the chorus because I didn't want to make a a dreary song about suicide I want it to be a, a message of hope and I wanted the music to be uplifting and exciting and to and to really give you that kick that maybe someone out there needs to to um you know make them turn around from making the wrong decision you know and um and just you know find it within yourself to you know to carry on and, and 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 reach out and talk to someone about how you're feeling and that's the message that I really wanted to get um across in the song you know so um when you're you know I I never set out to write any songs I never have an agenda where today I'm going to write about trucks and bees. I, I'm not that kind of songwriter. I just don't write that way. When I have an inspiration, or when I have a thought or an idea, I just work from there. You know, um, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I just say how I feel. And so I'm not a contrived songwriter where I go in and, 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 you know, plan out my album and go, well, we need a song about suicide and we need a song about this. I, I just don't write that way. So carry on all comes from the heart. And then I produce it from the head thinking, how can I really get my message across and um, be, be sociable, acceptable on a music platform? Yeah. Growing up around as many people as you did who took their own lives. I don't want to use the term normalize as in it was a normalized thing to do, but it's certainly something that was, not uncommon for you um do you think that there's a danger when that happens that you do start to think that it's you know it's not necessarily obviously not an acceptable thing to do but it's it's an option that people were taking and therefore in terms of your own mental health the context of of that can change that makes sense i i totally agree with you i think um when you do have it within your life you know it is an option as a way out, you know, um, and yeah, I, it's, it's, um, it's pretty, you know, like it's real heavy, you know, mm. it's really, it's really heavy. And, 
And I've said in all my interviews since the 7th of January when this song got released, like it's, um, it's great to talk about this topic, but it's also very heavy because it brings up a lot of emotions and a lot of memories from the past. And yeah. um, people out there are still dealing with a lot of pressures like COVID and this the last two years has really uh, magnified all, all these things that were probably, you know, under the carpet or something and, and really exposed people's mental health. And, and um, so, yeah, it's, it's something really heavy to talk about. Sure. Um, you don't have to talk no, too much. No, we don't want no, to. You know, we, we need to, we yeah. need to, and, you know, and, and, and a song like carry on needs to be out there. It, mm -hmm. it needs to be out there because it's, it's a healing process, you know, it's a, an awareness, you know, and as common as it is, which is, which is really tragic to say that, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's more and more becoming, you know, almost a tr trendy thing to do. <laughs> it's just ridiculous, you know, like, you know, when, when things get too hard, that's it. There's, there's the way out and I I've just always been like no you know just just reevaluate the situation talk to people find it within yourself we need you you know people love you and the devastation mm. that happens to the family after something like this goes down is is um you know some people don't ever heal from it you know so yeah I think well, one of the things I really like about your belief in kicking your own ass is that implicit in that is proactivity and that idea that that actually doing something can start off a momentum that can yeah. help you get through something. Um, so I think that's more a comment than a uh, that is than a question, but it's it's not a bad policy kicking your own ass. <laughs> it's not, you know, and you know, with the lyrics of the chorus you know I think about my daughter I think about my sons and I think about my wife and I think about how much they need me they rely on me to be here and to be strong and to be able to carry on for their sake you know um, for many reasons not just financial or love reasons but to be someone to look up to to say no like dad didn't quit he didn't give up you know and then the start of the chorus says I think about like the firefighters you know and i think about the soldiers which is myself saying hey mate there's there's people out there doing it way tougher than you are mate way tougher you know and all you know the things that you're going through today they're going through so much more than you so you know just to put things into perspective there's always there's always someone out there that's doing it tougher than you are you know someone on the front line or someone in a in a burning you know blaze of fire you know it's it's like wow think about how their day's going today and then reevaluate your day and that's what the chorus is so yeah like i think it's important to kick your own ass i think it's important to have a uh, reality check right and say, all right, this is what's happening, whatever reason. But, you know, time heals everything and, and, and we'll get through this. We'll get through this, you know. Um, and that's, that's what the song is about. So you talked about the process of writing from the heart and then using your head to put together how the song should be produced. That's a level of musical experience required in that. And so this sure. is this is a segue for me talking about your musical life now, which is that you started playing guitar at the age of nine, I understand. Um, so uh, were you a child who practiced regularly? Absolutely. You know, this was back in the day before video games and stuff, although I did have an Atari, but... I got pretty bored of that pretty quickly. So, you know, these days it's so much harder for kids to learn, you know, there's so many other distractions, but back then I just literally gave it my all, you know, and, and my mum would say, put the guitar down and come and eat some dinner. Yes. So I, I just 
consumed it. I really did. You know, I started in, in um, year five and, and I, like from that point on, it, it was all I did, you know. And, and, and then, you know, the singing probably came in high school when I was writing my own songs and I started to write lyrics and um, no one else was going to sing my songs for me. So <laughs> I just kind of started that. And then obviously, you know, I started doing the cover scene and then it just went from there and then I had singing lessons. And then I, in the early 2000s, I was lucky to work in a few recording studios around Sydney with Harry Vander and Tim Farris from In Excess. And, and, and you know, so I, I kind of learned from just looking over the shoulder there. Um, and then when I went to set up my own studio, just from the experience, I just went, okay, well, Harry had that or Tim had that. And so that's fine. And then it's, it's really just, you know, you, you learn from your mistakes. If I think about the recordings that I made 10 years ago to the ones I'm recording now, it's, 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 you know, like chalk and cheese, apples and oranges. So, um, you know, for me, it was just a matter of, 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 I just kind of got into it, you know, um, and I was lucky. Yeah. I, I was working in recording studios and, and so I was, I was able to pick up and learn, which has allowed me to, you know, be able to record myself and produce my music as well as others. So um, very lucky in that sense. Um, not everyone can do that. Um, as far as the mixing goes, I, I have mixed my own music in the past and I've mixed others as well for this album compared to the last album that I did I wanted I wanted a real universal worldly sound and so um, I've been a fan of like a mixing engineer um, Billy from Nashville and he's had like 25 number ones and stuff like that so I reached out to Billy Decker um, via um, social media mm -hmm. and um, he was really cool and um yeah so he mixed carry on um and he's mixing the whole album and and if you hear my last album compared to the new single you you know sonically it just sounds like out of this world and that's what i wanted to get i wanted that nashville radio sound but with my production so um i feel you know experience wins all the time you know so i felt okay I think I'm pretty confident songwriter and producer. I haven't done loads of mixing, so maybe I'll outsource my weakness mm -hmm. um, and have someone that I know is an, is an absolute just mixing engineer badass mm -hmm. and produce the goods for me. So that's what I did, you know? Um, and so Carry On is a, is, a, is a great example of my production mixed by a Nashville mixing engineer and I just think it sounds great when I hear it on the radio and then I hear something like Keith Urban or something like that which I know has had you know millions of dollars spent on it it stands up and I'm like yes that's exactly what I wanted because you know we're all competing in the same market you know I'm I'm competing with you know Keith and Lee and Troy and everyone like that you know there's there's the same spotlight that we're all trying to compete to. So sonically, I wanted it to be on par. Right. Being a producer though, do, do you think you approach your own music in a, in a different way? Like you're, as soon as you write the song, I guess, are you starting to produce it in your head? Yeah. Okay. Does that, um, <laughs> it's, it's, does that mean you second guess yourself as a writer? Do you start thinking, oh, mm, that's not going to sound that good. Mm. Might have to change it. The, the beauty about country music is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as long as you don't, you know, there are certain instruments and certain elements that if you put into your production, it will just sound country, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other instruments like synthesize and stuff like that. But if you put into your music, it will make it sound pop, you yeah. know. So, you know as long as you kind of stick to those um, instruments or sounds that, um, you know, relate to the genre, you know, it's, it's a safe bet, you know, yeah. um, with carry on, I could have had a blazing synthesized solo or whatever, but I decided to go with pedal steel and fiddle, mm -hmm. which straight away gives it a real 
country flavor and that's what I am I'm a country artist so I'm producing country music so having those elements so from a producer it's really just about choice and the instruments that you choose to be a part of of um you know it's like you're painting and you've got a blank canvas and then you just the the colors you choose dictate the end result yeah right now part of your country music journey was being in star maker in 1997 yeah. and 1998 and you were also at the cmaa academy in 1998 so that was a big year for you uh, yeah, what yeah. did you like about both of those experiences or maybe you didn't like them no, I absolutely loved them. And I think Star Make was amazing. I was there in 97 and 98. And then I also did the Country Music of College, which is, yeah, is now called the Academy. Um, it, it was absolutely brilliant. You know, um, we had, uh, you know, we had Slim Dusty, we had Troy Casadaly and Alan Caswell. You know, we had some really amazing songwriters come in and take our class. And, and um, so, you know, I probably learned so much about songwriting from those two weeks at the academy um and learn how to craft a good country song you know um and and it was pretty intense because you you had to write a lot of um uh, you know just ideas that you didn't even really care about you know um they would like pass a hat around with names and stuff and and you would just um you know uh, choose a name you know and and you'd have to write a song about it you know so yeah very amazing experience with the academy um i recommend it to anyone that's looking at getting into the country music scene um and star maker is just fantastic as well you know it's 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 that you know we're so lucky to have those two things in our industry that you know really nurture artists and and support up and coming artists so um yeah yeah it's incredibly good professional development um it in is. a way that is not offered i think in other genres or not to the same extent yeah yeah it um, is oh, sorry, yeah, we're, go on. we're very lucky that we have oh sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the internet. No, you keep going. You keep going. <laughs> I was just going to say, look, you know, we're, we're very lucky with the country music industry because, you know, we do have, you know, some, some very large festivals and, and, you know, there's a lot of support for the music compared to the other genres in this country. So, you know, yeah, very lucky um, to be a country artist because, yeah, there's, there's a scene. There's yeah. an actual scene, you know, um, and a lot of other genres just don't have that scene. Yeah. Um, now, you've, I've read that you've said about your music that you just want to connect to people. Um, yeah. and I'm wondering if that has been the driver from the start for you, from the start of songwriting, perhaps. It, it really has. You know, I've just, I've just always done my thing and, um, you know, I don't, I don't know, I I just try to be as real as I possibly can. It's, it's, it's that simple, you know, um, just be real and, and be honest. I'm not trying to sell anything. I don't care if you don't like my music. Um, I would absolutely love it if you do, but if you don't, that's totally fine. And, and that's kind of where I am at as a writer and as an artist, you know, it's like, you know, I just write for me. I purely write and produce my music so that I can listen back to it like a photo album in time, you know, um, so that my, my family and my friends who support me um, can also share a little bit of my, my thoughts, you know, what's going through my head or what's on my heart, you know, and, and so I just feel that I just continue to stay honest with my writing and if people are moved by it then that's great if they're not that's also fine uh, it's a it's a good place to get to I would imagine because otherwise you could spend a lot of time and energy worrying about what people think but that can also affect what you produce because you can get into a loop of overthinking it like is someone going to like it I don't want to be disliked and I do think that can have a negative impact on creativity exactly you can you can spend too much time in your own head and um, it can it can really 
muck with your creativity because you're never happy or you're never satisfied. And I just think, you know, you've just got to be honest and, and write the way that you want to write and tell your story. And I think um, a genuine artist is, you know, will, will have um, a longevity within their career if they can do that, if they can just be true to themselves and just be successful as that, you know, I think you'll sleep at night so much better. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Um, now, pre-COVID, you were playing about 150 shows a year, I believe. So you yeah. must have really felt their absence over the past couple of years. Are things picking up now? They are. They're slowly getting back to it. We've still got some restrictions, obviously, but yeah, they're definitely getting back to where they were. Um, you know, it was it was a really crazy time and and um, hard and and really just yeah, I didn't know what to do with myself except go into the studio and write a brand new album, you know, and and um, spend time with my family, which was probably you know to be honest, you know that was that was the best thing was actually someone pressed the pause button and I was able to spend so much more time with my family and and that's the greatest gift ever you know so yeah um now you live on the central coast of New South Wales and obviously for lifestyle reasons it's wonderful but for country music shows or gigs in general what's the live music scene like there it's really good. It's very supportive, you know, all the way from Newcastle, Central Coast. Uh, you know, there's there's such a good country vibe happening there. There's a lot of country musicians um, that live up there as well. So, you know, there's a there's a really healthy scene and, and a very supportive scene. There's lots of country music fans that really love their music. Um, but that kind of goes across the board. Like all of the regional areas just really love country music and community radio you know is a is a huge big factor into that as well and we're just very lucky you know the scene is alive and well you know it's not smoke and mirrors like all of the other scenes like the rock scene or the pop scene like you know I don't know about Melbourne or Brisbane but there's no scene for that in Sydney like where do you go and see original bands anymore there's probably one or two venues that are that are literally just hanging on you know and unless you're a big profiled act you won't be able to get on to festivals you know so it's really hard for those genres but country music is alive and kicking you know there's so many great festivals and um you know there's rsls to play at so there's always shows to do it's very exciting and and um great time to be in country music for sure so do you think you'll be able to get back on the road soon? Maybe to Tamworth so. as a first stop? I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, we're, you know, we're working towards that and, and um, that's the plan for sure. Um, so, Jamie, you mentioned that uh, writing for a new album and recording and, uh, and mi- mixing that new album, so it sounds like that is not too far off or you're going to release some more singles soon. I'm going to release some more singles. I've got about three or four more singles to release throughout the year. And then I'll drop the album um, towards the end of, um, towards the end of the year. Yes. Um, Well, people can look out for your singles or listen out for your singles, I should say. Uh, It's been a great pleasure to talk to you. Very, very interesting. I love hearing about the production side of things. So thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Bye.